Greetings, friends and brethren. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Continuing Church of God. Today I'd like to talk about the atonement offering. If you've got your Bibles, you might want to follow along. We're going to be reading from both the Old and New Testaments. I'm going to begin in the 29th chapter of the book of Numbers, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. So starting there, Numbers chapter 29 and verse 7. On the tenth day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall afflict your souls. You shall not do any work. You shall present a burnt offering to the Lord as a sweet aroma, one young bull, one ram, and seven lambs in their first year. Be sure they are without blemish. If you continue through the passage, you'll see that other offerings were part of that particular day. But what about the New Testament? Well, if you've got your Bibles, let's go over to the book of Hebrews. We're going to start reading in Hebrews chapter 9 and see how some of this actually ties in with Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 9, starting verse 11. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not of the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who, through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, Cleanse your conscience from good works to serve the living God. Now what's interesting about this, you see that the high priest once for all went into the most holy place, the mercy seat, and talked about the blood of calves and goats. Well, on the Day of Atonement was the only time when the high priest actually went before the mercy seat. And you can read that in Leviticus chapter 16, verse 2. And the Day of Atonement had two goats involved, one that represented the Azazel goat, scapegoat of Satan, and the other one which represented Jesus Christ. So you see this passage in the book of Hebrews ties into the Day of Atonement. Now, about offerings, if you've been in the Church of God for any t length of time, or even if you haven't, you might be familiar with Deuteronomy 16.16. 16. It says that, when you're supposed to come before God, and everyone's supposed to appear and not appear empty-handed. I'd like, however, to read this from the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter uh, 23, starting in verse 14. It says, Three times you shall keep a feast to me in the year. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread, you shall eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded you at the appointed time in the month of Abib, as you came out of Egypt, none shall appear before me empty. The feast of harvest, the first fruits of your labor, which you have sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering at the end of the year, when you have gathered in your fruit of your labors in the field. Three times in the year all your males shall appear before the Lord God. So we see there's three times or three seasons of the year. Now some have said, well, the Day of Atonement's not specifically mentioned, but in, in other places it is mentioned. But this particular time period includes the time known as the Feast of Tabernacles. If you've got your Bibles, you can read Ezra 3, verses 1 through 7, which ties in the time from the first day of the seventh month through the Feast of Tabernacles as a time for giving offerings. And the Day of Atonement, which we read earlier, is on the tenth day of that particular month. Now, something interesting about the Day of Atonement. There's a special offering associated with the Day of Atonement that's actually listed in the Bible. And if you are in the book of Exodus, we're going to go now to Exodus chapter 30, and we're going to start reading in verse 10. And Aaron shall make atonement upon its horns once a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonement. Once a year he shall make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy to the Lord. Now we're going to go into verse 11. So we see he's got to do with atonement, but now we're going to read verse 11. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, When you take a census of the children of Israel for their number, then every man shall give a ransom for himself to the Lord when you number them, that there be, be no plague among them when you number them. This is what every one among them who are numbered shall give. Half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary, a shekel is twenty geras, the half shekel shall be an offering to the Lord. Everyone included among those who are numbered from 20 years and above shall give the offering to the Lord. So this is a special offering. This is an offering for adults. So adults are supposed to be giving offerings if you're 20 and up. Uh, this is a biblical definition of an adult. But notice something interesting starting in verse 15, Exodus 30. 
The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel when you give an offering to the Lord to make atonement for yourselves. And you shall take the atonement money of the children of Israel and should point it for the service of the tabernacle of meeting, that it may be a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord to make atonement for yourselves. Well, this was in addition to the other offerings that they were giving. And I've tried to look this up in the commentaries. And so they believe that between one and three ounces of silver were given. And silver was more valuable then uh, compared to it is now. So what happens if people were to give roughly that in modern dollars, in U.S. dollars? Well, for what it's worth now, we could get several magazines out. We don't indiscriminately send them out, so this means that people who uh, get them uh, want them. We also could use the same money for like, a, like a, one or two ounces of silver worth at current prices to reach 40,000 different computers with our Google Ad campaign, of which 750 people will click on to learn more about what we're teaching. The money is not used to pay my salary, by the way, if you want to uh, give, give money, because I don't take a salary from the church. Uh, so the point of giving is not so I will get it, or the church will get it, but so it can be used for the work of the church which is similar to what was said in the book of Exodus for the work of the tabernacle back then. Well, you can't buy your salvation, which is one of the reasons why the atonement offering says rich cannot give more or the poor can't give less. There are some churches in the world that say the more you give, the more that uh, people will pray for you so you won't spend time in places like purgatory or whatever. Uh, the Bible doesn't endorse that. But the Bible does endorse uh, giving. Let's look in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, start reading in verse 6. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let every one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So God loves a cheerful giver. It is good for your spiritual growth to give. Now, the funds also support things such as uh, ministerial visits, uh, preparation of uh, final phase of the work, assisting the poor in places like Africa, and other aspects uh, of Matthew 24, uh, 14, and 28. And I'll get to those later. Now, I'm not saying if you don't give, the work of God is not going to get done. The work of God is going to get done whether you want to be part of it or not. But I would caution you that Jesus condemned or at least chastised the Laodiceans who were satisfied with their work. They didn't have the same Philadelphia work. They didn't have the same love for the brethren to get the gospel out as needs to be done to go through whatever doors uh, Christ will open. But let's look in the book of Zechariah, chapter uh, 4, verse 6, to see how the work is going to get done. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So the work of God is going to get done by God's spirit. And how well we respond to what God teaches us. It doesn't get done because of money. But your spiritual growth is affected by how much your heart is in the work, which would for most of you also include what you give. You know, Jesus said in Luke 12, 34, for where your heart, excuse me, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. And is your heart in the work? Do you truly want to support the work? Do you appreciate the sacrifice that Jesus did for you? Now, things are supposed to be done for God's glory. You're not supposed to give just for outward show. I'm going to go to the book of Haggai, chapter 2, verse 9. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Now, I ran across that scripture years and years ago, but when I first started to think about it after the uh, death of Herbert Armstrong and what happened to the old Worldwide Church of God. You know, they used to have a very fancy building, Ambassador Auditorium. I went to church services there. I visited there from time to time. And some people say, ah, you need fancy buildings now to show that God is with you. Well, there's a few groups that do that, but that's not the case. Notice it says in Haggai, the glory of the latter temple is going to be greater than the former. We have a work to do. Without uh, the need for fancy buildings, there could be a place for those in the future, but that's not the focus. The focus is not on outward appearance. The glory that God is talking about is spiritual. 
What we need to develop is spiritual growth, and giving is just one way we help demonstrate it. Now, if you go to the book of Malachi, Malachi chapter 3, we can read some things that God says about giving, or, record, or what God wants people to do. So in Malachi 3, starting in verse 8, it says, Will a man rob God? Yet you've robbed me. But you say, In what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You're cursed with a curse, for you've robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now, says the Lord of hosts, if, if I will not open up for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there's no room to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. So God says, look, take my word for it. Give tithes and offerings. I will bless you. Do you believe God? Now some might say, well, that's in the uh, Old Testament. I'm not going to read that, but in the New Testament, in 2 Corinthians uh, 9, I read verses 6 through 7, but if you go all the way through verse 14, similar concept is stated in the New Testament. God blesses those who will properly give offerings. Now I mentioned that the work is going to get done whether you participate in it or not, but let me just read a couple of passages about the work. And yes, I've read these before. Matthew 24, 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Now let's go a few chapters over to Matthew 28, starting in verse 19. Matthew 28, starting in verse 19. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you always, even into the end of the age. The Bible is clear that it's a work to be done. And you're not the only one in the work. Some people will participate a little bit because they want to save their own hides, not realizing that Philadelphians are supposed to love everyone. We're supposed to get the gospel of the kingdom of the world as a witness. We're supposed to teach all nations whatsoever Jesus commanded. Now, how are we doing that in the continuing church of God? Well, in addition to the messages that we have on our YouTube uh, channels, uh, radio, uh, which we also do, the internet, which I mentioned before, we also have uh, printed literature. But because everybody in the world does not speak English, our magazine, for example, is printed in the English language, the Mandarin Chinese language, and the Spanish language, which represent the three most commonly spoken languages in terms of numbers, native languages in the world. And since English is a second language for many people, we're able to reach many people by having literature in those languages. We also put out languages in Kiswahili, which is a, a language commonly used in uh, African countries such as uh, Tanzania, Uganda, uh, and, and Kenya. In addition to that, we put out printed literature in Tagalog, which is a language used for those of Filipino uh, uh, descent primarily. Also, we have materials elect electronically in languages such as uh, French, Hindi. We have a few other limited materials in other languages as well. Why say all this on atonement? for the Day of Atonement. Jesus was the Atonement Offertory. He was the offering for Atonement to fulfill particular, this particular day. But the Bible still shows that God loves a cheerful giver. Look in your hearts and give what you feel that you can. We don't want you to go bankrupt. We don't want you to uh, cash out your retirements or get into debt or something like that in order to give. Give as you are able, as it says in the New Testament. We want you to send us your... You can send your tithes or offerings, in this case offerings, or tithes for that matter, to the Continuing Church of God. And if you do send something from outside the United States, you put USA on it, preferably in, uh, in U.S. dollars. It does make it much easier for us. But a lot of you, that's not convenient. And what is convenient for many of you is to use PayPal. We do have a PayPal account. You can go to the ccog.org website, click on the Donations button. It also has our address there but also you can give a donation from wherever you are at, and it will convert it to U.S. dollars, which makes it uh, much easier for us. Uh, God loves a cheerful giver. May God bless you, and may you have a blessed uh, Day of Atonement.